sideways. I'm not at 100%, but I'm in my 90s, 91, 92%, somewhere up in there. I could be better, but I could also could be a lot worse. Uh, it's about 8.30. I uh, got a later start than I wanted. But that was because I didn't set an alarm. Uh, I let myself get up naturally. I woke up at uh, 6.30. Went inside, took a shower, was gonna get something to eat at Denny's, but Denny's was crowded. So I just went out and got fuel and left. I guess I got gone. I guess I got gone about 7:45, 7:30, 7:45. I didn't write it down. And I'm on my way to the Home Depot in Monroe, Louisiana. I'll be there in about an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, last night was pretty rough. I think I told y'all. I think I think I told y'all I was gonna take a shower and then go to bed. Well, I ended up skipping the shower. I uploaded the video to YouTube and I sat down, I was waiting for it to go up and started feeling worse and worse by the moment. So I just crawled in, crawled onto the bed and went to sleep. I woke up later and I was running a really high fever, I'd say about 101, 102. And I had the truck idling with the air conditioner on, but I was just burning up. And uh, so uh Wrapped myself in a towel, climbed to the bed, went back to tried to go back to sleep. And I guess later on around midnight or so, the fever that I had developed broke. And I was just drenched in sweat. Luckily I had the towel around me to soak it all up, so I got rid of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Went back to sleep. Sometime during the night, the cold moved from my head into my chest. Which is uh Actually, for me, it's better than having it in my head. I have a very, very difficult time when I can't breathe through my nose. I'm pretty much completely incapacitated at that point when I can't breathe through my nose. So it's in my chest. It hurts to uh, cough. But as long as I control it, I continue to drink lots of uh, clear liquids, water, and I got ginger ale too. Uh, I'll be much better off. So probably by the by Monday, I will have broken out of whatever this funk is I got. I got some kind of creepy crawly from somebody or something. And I think the very high humidity over the last couple of days, the excessive work that I put in the day before yesterday, it only and uh, all the graphite and crap in the air in that town is what did me in. So I'm gonna try and get out of those loads anytime I can get if I can, if I ever get one again. Because up until that point, I guess I was I wasn't perfect, but I was okay. I, I wasn't bad. Unless it was something I picked up at the insulation plant, which is a distinct possibility. I'll never know. I'll never know. So, I'm going to make this delivery here in Monroe, and then I'm not sure what's going to happen after that. I do know there are storms developing in South Texas right now, and they're going to be moving north. Uh, they haven't given me a pre-plan. They haven't given me any indication of what the, what the, what the story is here. I imagine that this load had a pre-plan on it for Corey. Uh, the guy I swapped loads with, so I would probably get his. Where that was going and what he was doing, I have no idea. I do know that my game plan for the week was to have me home this evening, around 8 o'clock. Maybe that will still happen. I do not know. If I don't make it home this weekend, I guess that's okay. Uh, if I make it home for the weekend, that's good too. Uh, this week is a bust. Uh, I only got about 13 or 1400 miles. So everything was shorts. And uh, that 
uh, maybe next week will be better. It's been way too much time loading and unloading. And uh, I figure if I'm home every weekend, my mileage is going to be down. You know, I need to convince the wife to let me work every other weekend so we have rollovers. Make some money. We shall see. Uh, we'll let you know later. Hey, YouTube. Uh, afternoon update. Uh, I'm getting ready to leave Monroe and I'm heading to Shreveport to pick up what looks like five steel coils. 48,000 pounds. They may be skidded. Not really sure. If they're skidded, yay. Uh, that'll make things a lot easier. Actually, no, I think either side is the easiest. It doesn't really matter. It'll be something other than freaking lumber tarps. Uh, that's going to North Carolina. So I guess I'm not going home this weekend. It's due Monday. So by the time I get it loaded, it's about two hours from here. By the time I get it loaded, I might be able to get back to Jackson to go to bed. We'll just have to see what happens. I'll let you know. Good evening, YouTube. How are you? I'm pretty good. Um, my chest hurts a bit from all the coughing and a little bit of a headache, but it's not as bad as it was yesterday. I am in, uh, uh, Rayville, Louisiana at, you guessed it, a pilot. Though, uh, unfortunately I'm kind of out of food in here, so... I was gonna go across the street to the pizza place that's here, but they close at eight. Go figure on a Friday. So I'm eating Wendy's from the truck stop. Oh, Lord have mercy. Um, things went pretty well, all things considered. Uh, after we talked last, uh, left Monroe and headed to Shreveport, uh, down by the port to pick up the coils, they are they are skidded steel coils. There's five of them, and uh, I got there right at two o'clock. I was an hour late for the appointment, but they knew that was going to happen because they didn't give me the load till eleven thirty, and the appointment was for one. It was a two-hour drive, uh, but they didn't seem to care when I got there. Only Mavericks seemed to care. So I got there, checked in, and I had to wait about an hour to get loaded. And that took about a half hour. And the place was pretty cool. They did it really fast. You know, they asked me a couple of questions about what I wanted. I told them I wanted it, you know, lightest in the front, heaviest in the rear, starting in the middle, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, my only problem was is this place is supposed to be super PPE. So I had to wear a long sleeve shirt, long sleeve pants, steel toe boots, gloves, eye protection, hard hat, and safety vest. The local employees didn't have to wear a jack. <laughs> and they're the ones messing with all the heavy stuff. All I did was stand on the end of my trailer and make sure that it was centered when they put them on the trailer. They were skidded out of, out of the sky. And they were steel, real short. It's about 46,000 pounds total. Um, securing went pretty well. They told me originally they wanted me to secure inside the building. But then after, after he loaded me, he told me to get out go secure out on the street uh, well, out of the driveway outside the building I was like what about the rain he's like uh, it's not raining right now so just get out there and do it I said okay so I humped out there parked the truck and since they wouldn't let me pull any of my stuff while I was waiting uh, I had to pull everything so I got all my chains got all everything done that I needed to do it did my blocking I ended up using seven chains and two straps I should have used eight chains and one strap. However, I got a my I got a ratchet binder that's broken. It will not expand or close on one side. So I uh, had to use straps uh, where I would have used a chain. So I used uh, the strap on the lightest one and on the, well, the two lightest ones. I used uh, chains 
uh, to, for blocking on each end of the, of the row. And then I used a strap on the first two and they used double chains and all the rest. So two for the middle, uh, two for the next one and, and one on top of the last. So everything was within securement standards, but it wasn't up to what would be good standard because it wasn't all chain because I couldn't use the one chain. Um, I'm going to try if I can tomorrow to drive by Jackson, the Jackson, uh, yard and see if I can swap out that ratchet binder. But I need to find out if they're even there on Saturday. Cause when I was there, when I was in Gary, I don't think anybody was there on Saturday. So the, maybe the shops in the field don't work on Saturdays. If not, I'll just have to deal with it the way it is. Um, I've tried everything I can possibly can to break that, that ratchet binder to make it turn on that one side and it just won't do it. No amount of grease or WD-40 or I even uh, let, you know, bound it to the inside of the, the rail on the trailer and tried to use my, my winch bar to pop it and it just wouldn't do it. So, uh, problem was is while I was actually securing it started to rain and uh, you know it wasn't heavy it was light sprinkling and this stuff was completely wrapped the steel wasn't exposed so I went ahead and threw the, got it done as quick as I could threw the canvas tarps on there and then finished tightening everything down and then uh, put the after I got that on there um, it stopped raining so I moved, moved the canvas tarps <coughs> excuse me I'm sorry I really am uh, to put um, uh, four by fours along the tops of the coils to make a TP for the for the upper tarp so the rain would run off so they wouldn't sink into the middle of the coils not that it would because these things are completely encased in, in paper and plastic I'm, they're solid so but I went and got those on there got that bungee down then threw the canvas tarps back on and uh, then whipped out my uh, steel tarp thank you and it only took one, so I threw that puppy on there, and got that down in about 20 minutes. But uh, just as I was got, just as I got the, uh, the the steel tarp on, which is a vinyl tarp, that's when it really started to rain. It started coming down, so I ended up having to bungee it all in the rain, and I did it kind of quick. So it took about an hour and 40 minutes to secure and tarp the load, and an hour to load. An hour to waiting to load and then a half hour to load. So I was there like three and a half hours. That's not too bad. And then I took my 30 minute break um, immediately after that. The downside of all that was is I, because I spent so long waiting to load, I wasn't, I didn't have enough time to get to Jackson. I'm still about 100 miles away from Jackson. So, but that's cool. That's cool. It's 8 30. There was no parking here. I ended up having to, uh, to buy a reserve spot, but luckily I've got plenty of points on uh, my pilot card since I only fuel at Pilot Flying J and uh, was able to pay for it with that. That's what I use my points for, uh, paying for parking and uh, uh, internet access um, when I need it. Though I just, I just recently bought the $99 for a year, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. The problem I do have to worry about is not all the Flying J's have the enhanced the Flying J's or pilots have all have the enhanced uh, Wi-Fi yet. So, well, I'm gonna finish my dinner and then I'm gonna go to bed. I just plan on getting up around uh, five to uh, take a shower. I need I need to be out of here by six fifteen, six thirty at the very latest, and try to get it as get as far as I can. Now, it's eight hundred in. I think it's 890 miles from where I'm sitting, something like that. Excuse me, I take that back. It's 818 according to Diesel. And uh, my original thought was, is if I could have left earlier and gotten to Jackson, then I could have got to Jackson and then drove it and, and got to a truck stop, which is just down the street from where I'm going, and did a full reset there. But I'm not going to be able to do that now. Though, uh, that's life. I'll just have to roll next week. Um... So get out of here at 6.30 and try to get as far as I can. Shut down around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon at a truck stop. A pilot, preferably. Um, so I can have internet. And uh, see where we go from there. So, uh, 
Got any questions or comments, please post them below or email me or post on TTR. And uh, if you have, uh, if you want, uh, please go ahead and click the subscribe button, follow me, and uh, follow my insane adventures on the road. So with that said, keep the shiny side up, 73s, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.